Hello there, Merry Christmas, North Star, small group. I appreciate the opportunity uh, to come to you today and to share with you some uh, devotional thoughts and reflections on the season. You know, this is a strange year, 2020, and it wouldn't it be just like 2020 for us to have on the night of December 21st an amazing astronomical event uh, when Jupiter and Saturn come uh, close to one another and will form what will be uh, known as uh, sort of like a Christmas star, uh, perhaps similar to that which uh, was seen on the night of Christ's birth. It certainly has been a strange year, and in many ways a year where we have learned uh, want, really once and again how little control we have over our lives and circumstances. Uh, it reminds me of what was going on uh, in Christ's birth when Christ was born as the Israelites were seeking uh, a Messiah um, and, uh, and, G and Jesus Christ was the one who was sent. You know, our God is a powerful God and he's in control. Uh, from the very beginning, uh, he has had plans and his plans have come about. And it's in times like these when it's good to once again be reminded uh, that there's no panic in heaven, only plans. God has a plan and he's working his plan for our good and for his glory. Now, uh, the wise men uh, arrived uh, to Jerusalem. Uh, they uh, knew that the king of the Jews should be born in Jerusalem, and they had seen his star, and, and uh, they'd seen the uh, uh, astronomical event which uh, led them uh, to travel what many think by camel would be six months in order to find uh, and to see uh, what it was that uh, they had long awaited for. Now, what did these magi, uh, these wise men, what did they study? Uh, these wise men studied but two things, the, the skies, of course, uh, and the ancient text. Uh, you see, there's an amazing thing about stars. Uh, stars in the sky, the God created them, and uh, he named them all, and he knows each one. Uh, the Bible says in uh, Isaiah 44, look up into the sky, uh, it, it says, lift up your eyes. Uh, who created all these things? Uh, he who brings out the starry host one by one and calls forth each of them by name because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. You know, they say just in our galaxy alone, there are a hundred billion Stars. So to think that God knows where each one is and never loses one and knows each by name and created each one for a specific purpose is amazing. And when you start studying astronomy, you begin to realize that stars never move. They never change. They're fixed in their position, unlike the earth, which we rotate. And so when you see stars moving around, it's not the stars that are moving. It's we are. We are moving. Uh, we are rotating on our axis and also revolving uh, around the sun. But if you know the fixed point of a star, you can see things and follow things. Uh, they used to do this in sailing. That's how they were able to find out uh, direction patterns and where they're going. Uh, and certainly uh, it, it could be used by the wise men who followed the star to find Jesus. Now, not only did they study the night sky, though they also, uh, we know, studied uh, the ancient text. Uh, text uh, such as uh, this one, Numbers 24, verse 17 which says there shall be a star out of Jacob and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. So there was a specific group of men who were watching the night sky and they saw something that caused them to set about on this journey. And when they arrived, they did find Jesus just as was promised and they gave him gifts, the gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Uh, you know, God is a God who is the Lord Almighty. When we pray to God, we don't even sometimes, I believe, fully understand who it is we pray to. Uh, he's one who uh, is able to accomplish anything. He, he doesn't show us the vastness of this universe and uh, just to, so we might find ourselves insignificant. No, he, he wants us to, to know just how big he is. He's bigger than any problems or issues that we face. Our circumstances today may seem uh, overwhelming, but let me tell you, friends, they're not overwhelming to him. Uh, the Bible tells us there are many prophecies relating to Jesus. In, in the book of Isaiah, uh, for instance, we could think of uh, the one that in Isaiah 7 that says, uh, 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 The sign I shall give unto you, uh, a virgin shall conceive and bear, bring forth a son, and, and you shall call his name Emmanuel. Or Isaiah chapter 9, where it says, Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders, and you shall 
Call him wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. Certainly, these are prophecies that were fulfilled in Jesus Christ and were written 700 years before Christ was born. But can I give you just one more example? Uh, in this time of political upheaval and things, it's good to remember that the heart of the king uh, is, uh, is uh, like a river of water that, the, that God says that he, he just moves to and fro however he wants to. Uh, the Bible says he, uh, God is in ultimate uh, control. We are to pray for whoever is in authority over us, Romans chapter 13, but we are to also know that ultimately God reigns in heaven. And certainly Isaiah would have been able to, to, to show you this. And so I want to give you this example today for, for times like these, uh, and especially for this Christmas. And I hope it brings you uh, some peace and some joy. If you go to your Bibles in Isaiah chapter 45, I'm going to uh, turn there. It, it, it's a wonderful promise. It wasn't written 700 years before, uh, but, but about 200 200 years before the birth of the one it was written about. But it was written uh, to specificity to show us just how much God is in control. Can I read it for you quickly? In, in Isaiah 45, it says, Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, and he who formed you from the womb. I am the Lord who makes all things, who stretches out the heavens all alone, who spreads abroad the earth by myself, who frustrates the signs of the babblers and drives diviners mad, who turns wise men backward and makes their knowledge foolish, who confirms the word of his servant and performs the counsel of his messengers, who says to Jerusalem, you shall be inhabited, to the cities of Judah you shall be built, and I will raise up her waste places, who says to the deep, be dry, and I will drop your rivers, who says to Cyrus, he is my shepherd, and he shall perform all my pleasure, saying to Jerusalem, You shall be built, and to the temple your foundation shall be laid. A couple things here. First of all, this was written before the Jews went into captivity. Most of the prophets are either written before or, or during or, or after the 70-year captivity. And certainly Isaiah was saying that there would be some desolation and some judgment, but also that Jerusalem and Judah would be rebuilt. And then he names somebody by name. He names a man named Cyrus, and he says, This is the one that the Lord has chosen. Now listen, if we turn in our Bibles quickly to Second Chronicles. Uh, uh, the last chapter and the last verse. Do you know the Second Chronicles last chapter and last verse? Second Chronicles 36, verse 23 and 23 are actually the last words of the Old Testament. Yeah, we got it kind of backwards in our Bibles, but the Hebrew Bible, this would be the last of the Old Testament scriptures. And it's the proclamation of a man named Cyrus. And listen to what he proclaimed, exactly what the Lord said he would 200 years before. Now, in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, so that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and also put it in writing, saying, Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, and all the kingdoms of the earth, the Lord God of heaven has given me, and he has commanded me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Who is among you of all his people? May the Lord his God be with him, and let him go up. That's right, friends. Isaiah named the person name the person who would who would lead the people back, would allow them to rebuild the temple, would help them rebuild the temple and reestablish worship to God after the period of 70 years when they were captive in Babylon. This is the one Daniel wrote about in Daniel chapter 5. His name, Daniel chapter 9, his name is Cyrus, but he was named by God 200, over 200 years before in the prophecy of Isaiah. Now listen, even gets stranger, so real quickly... He said he's, he'll be named Cyrus, my shepherd. Now, Cyrus had a granddaddy, and Cyrus's granddaddy uh, uh, took his daughter and married him to a, name, uh, a guy named like Campbellus the First. And, and Campbellus the First and, and, and Cyrus's granddaddy, whose name is hard to pronounce, uh, they uh, they had a child, and you would think they would call it Campbellus the Second, certainly. But there was something about this child. You see, the granddaddy had a dream, and in this dream, he he dreamed that that his grandson would grow up. And would overthrow him and have him killed. And so when, when, when Cyrus was born, when Cannibalus and his wife had a baby, the, the king uh, had the baby uh, taken out and he told uh, his servants to kill him. But they didn't kill him. Instead they found, uh, uh, I guess they, they had a conscience or something, they, they, they found a, a family with a stillborn baby who was burying their baby. And they said, listen, we, we can't do this. Let's give him to this one. It, it'll be like the same thing. So they traded. They said, you give us your dead baby, we'll give you this baby. And they took the dead baby back to the grandfather and said, 
Here he is. We killed him. But the live baby lived. Now guess what this family did? They were shepherds. Remember the scripture? Isaiah uh, chapter 45. I'll call him Cyrus my shepherd. So he was born into uh, as, as a prince, but, but he was raised as a shepherd. He was raised there 10 years. Finally, after 10 years, after year after year of the grandfather just being heartbroken over what he had done, the servants finally admitted to him, listen, we didn't kill him, uh, but, but he's still being raised just down the road. And so, uh, so the king said, go get him. I want to meet my grandson. So he went and got him, brought him into the palace, raised him as a, 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 a prince. And you know what happened? Exactly what the dream said. Uh, Cyrus grew up, led an army against his grandfather father and overthrew him and uh, had him uh, killed. And Cyrus eventually had a son and they called him Campbellus II. Nobody really knows in world history why he's called Cyrus, but we do because God gave him his name and God gave him his position as shepherd and God made him king. Why? So that God could use him to bring back the people, uh, 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 the Israelites, took back to home to uh, Jerusalem and so that the temple might be relayed and rebuilt. Listen, friends, when God speaks, it happens. When God says it's going to happen, it's going to happen. How it's going to happen and when it's going to happen, God's word is true. In fact, you can't come to Jesus until first you recognize that his word is true. The Bible tells us the greatest word uh, of all, that God sent forth his son, born uh, of, a, of a woman, born of the seed of woman, and, uh, and uh, he, he was born uh, in a stable in Bethlehem. The God, God's word tells us that, uh, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. What a wonderful news it is today. Good news of great joy, as the angel said, that Jesus Christ is born into us. God foresaw this. Uh, and, and planned this in the beginning. He, he allowed his prophets to know and to write about it. And Jesus fulfilled every prophecy as he said, I, I will fulfill every jot and tittle of the law. Every, every I will be uh, uh, dotted and every T will be crossed because that's how our God works. Listen, friends, God is in control today. Maybe you voted for somebody else. <laughs> that's okay. God's in control. Maybe, maybe you don't understand uh, what or don't trust what the government's doing. That's okay. God's in control. Listen, maybe today you say, you know, listen, uh, uh, preacher, I, I just... Uh, I'm just not so sure about what's going on in our world today. Listen, I know who does know. God knows. God knows. And you know, I've read the back of the book, and just to go along with the cliche here, we, we win. The, the battle, uh, it may, we may lose sometimes, but the victory is ours because the victory is given to the Lamb who was slain from the foundation of the world. His name is Jesus Christ. He was promised hundreds of years ago. My friend, he came 2,000 years ago and lived and died on a cross. And my friend, I believe, if anything, 2020 is a dress rehearsal showing us that he's soon coming again. God bless you. Merry Christmas, uh, North Star family. And I look forward to talking to you again soon, if not on this, in this world on the other side. Merry Christmas and God bless you. Bye-bye for now.